Hi everybody, uh, welcome to Archives Live. Um, my name is Ardis Shador and I am currently the archivist here at the library. And what we do on Thursdays <laughs> is we look at local history and we do it in a different kind of way. What we do is we do it interactively with you. We don't have a clue what we're gonna be looking at at first. And the way we do this is by letting you make choices. So your first choice today, um, as is every day, is you're going to go ahead and pick a number between one and 10, and that's gonna pick the cabinet that we're gonna be looking at today. So any number between one and 10. To choose one of those numbers, all you have to do is go into the comment section, and you can go ahead and type, and I'm gonna go say hi there so you know I'm there. Um, you go into the comment section, and all you have to say is a number between one and 10. So you can say number five, number six, whatever, and that'll tell us what cabinet. After that, we'll go forward and make a couple more choices to see what we're looking at. If you are interested in making a request of archives, you can do it in a few different ways. The first way you can do is you can call us, 705-272-4178. You can email us, artis, A-R-D-I-S, at cochraneontario.com. And you can visit our website, www cochranepubliclibrary.com, click on the services tab, go to archives, and then you can see all the information there as well. Uh, hi, Doris. Uh, the other thing that you can do too is you can drop by the library and get an archives request form. You can fill that out with your archives request. So those are the few different ways you can do your archives forms. Hi, Jennifer. Uh, so again, pick a number between one and 10 and go ahead and put it in the comment box below. That's gonna tell us what cabinet we're looking at today. Again, nothing is chosen. Uh, beforehand, I have no clue what we're going to look at. I don't know what the part of uh, Cochrane's history or surrounding area we're going to be venturing. <laughs> okay, we got a number. Great. So while I go and I'm going to just check here, number six, um, what you need to do now is pick a number between one and 50. So go ahead and put it in there. You can throw a few numbers in there because if one of the files is smaller, I can go ahead and open another file and look at it. So number six is location, organization, and what was that? location, event, and organization history. So we don't know, that's a crapshoot. Okay, hi, everybody's filtering in now. Sorry I was a couple minutes late, that's my own fault. Got busy upstairs, we're a little bit short today. Okay, so we have a few numbers. I'm gonna go pick file number 27 to start with, and then after that I will bring that over and then we'll go from there. Okay, let's see what we got today. I'm back. <laughs> so what we have is the first file, number 27, uh, La Rouge Center uh, de Culture. And I know I pronounce things improperly in French. I am so sorry already. Rather apologize now. Ask for, was it better to seek forgiveness than ask permission? Works for some things. So the file is very small, so we'll probably do the other file as well. If you have another number that you would like to choose, go ahead and you can do that. There's no problem whatsoever. Okay. Let's see what's in here. We've got a copy of an article um, from, I'm going to see if we can see the date on it. Uh, Northland Post, October 18th, 1989. And it says, Town transfers land to La Roche and the future location of their building. And town council has agreed to transfer land on 6th Street adjacent to Ecole Saint-Joseph to La Roche for construction of a $1 million cultural center at Tuesday night's regular meeting. Council approved the request from La Roche and transfer the municipally owned land. The town will begin to negotiate terms with them. And there's a nice little picture. Let's have a little look at that. So there's a picture. If you know the people or know the family of the people that may be in that picture, go ahead and you can tag them or share this video. That's completely fine. 
If your video is cutting out just because I do have someone asking that, it could be because the internet connection currently, when it uploads, there'll be no more cutouts and you're able to watch the, the whole thing in the entirety. So if you have some hard time with it, just come back after you're able to go ahead and watch this. And we also post it on YouTube as well. Okay. So that's a whole, I'm not gonna read the entirety of the article. It's fairly large about the construction. Uh, what else do we have here? Okay, and then we've got uh, maintenance of Lou's Backhoe Hall, and they're talking about that. I'm gonna show you. C'est dans français. I'm not going to horribly pronounce everything. Tu regardes ça. Okay, have a look at that, it's pretty good. Everybody, probably most people forgot about that little building behind. So this right now is where actually CarQuest is across from the tracks. When you're coming past the police station and there's the tracks, you see where CarQuest is, used to be KFC. And then that's the hall that's directly behind it. Okay. And then last but not least, November 22nd, 1989. Prospect of new cultural center highlights activities of the Ruche. Uh, the prospect of a new cultural center has been the focal points of the meetings held at the Knights of Columbus Hall. Anita Cote, president of the La Ruche, uh, again this year completing the final year of her two term. The membership is about 315 in Cochrane, with 55 members turned out to the annual meeting. And you're going to see a volunteer award that's being presented uh, to Therese Roy. Have a look there. Very nice picture of the two ladies. Again, if you know the family or the individual or anything like that, feel free to share or tag them in this video so that they can enjoy it. Lots of cute little tidbits right out of the paper and other little pieces. So that was the first file. I'm just gonna scroll and see what the other number was. I'll go grab that other file real quickly. Okay, so we got another file here for you. <laughs> I don't have any assistance anymore. Summer is long past, so I have to keep getting up to the filing cabinet myself, but that's okay. Um, now we've got uh, Knights of Columbus Council, 1917 Cochrane. It's a fairly, a little bit bigger of a file. It's got some newspapers in there though. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll look at this. If you have any questions while I'm going through it or you want me to put something back up to the screen, go ahead and put that in the comments and I can do that. Remember, all of this material is available to you through uh, request. So if you wanted to see something, we can take a digital image of things um, and then go ahead and forward it to you. So we've got a provincial conference, August 25th, 26th, 27th, 1972 in Cochrane. And you're gonna see the And my favorite thing about any kind of program or little booklet like this is when you get to look at the ads. <laughs> and that might seem crazy to some people, but it's something I enjoy. It always dates when businesses were in function or you get to find out something interesting that is not necessarily written anywhere else. They might have made an ad. This one's Ontario Northland Transmission Commission, key to your wonderful James Bay country. And something that sticks out right away here is cruise picturesque Lake Nipissing and the upper French river on diesel ship chief commanda from mid June to mid September daily, except Tuesday, the fare is $4 and 50 cents. So, and again, for full details, I'm just going to go ahead and put that there for full details, right? <laughs> and then they give you your address. Regina Street, North Bay, Ontario, but it is a very full page ad here in 1972. And then when I open the back, you see again, we've got a few here. So make sure we're, we got Central Taxi. So everybody gets a kick out of that. Okay, Paul Nadeau and Polar Bear Camp and Outfitters. So if you wanted to go 
bird hunting, moose hunting, all your information's there as well. Now, I better get to the actual content of this rather than go down the rabbit hole looking at all the ads. Um, Knights of Columbus of Cochrane extend the most hearty welcome to the squires, delegates, brother knights, ladies, and visitors. It is an honor for us to be the host of 1972 Ontario Columbian uh, Squires Conference. And this Father Len O'Malley, Provincial Father Prior, says, Dear squires and guests, I am happily here to welcome all of you to the 18th Annual Conference. I have been associated with the Columbian Squires for 20 years. In 1952, I was initiated as a charter member of the Oshawa Circle and was elected the first Chief Squire. Subsequently, I was a father prior to the um, Brampton Camp Circles. For the past three years, I have been the district chairman for the West End of Toronto. During 20 years, I've had great satisfaction, happiness in my association with the Squires, the Knights, their families, and friends. Lifelong meaningful friendships have developed over the years. The precious hours that we spend together in Cochrane will give us the opportunity of renewing old friendships as well as developing new ones. I hope that your association with, uh, with us will be joyful and meaningful. So very nice. And this goes on to have messages from different squires and, and heads. And it has the program. And I'm going to go ahead and lift it to the camera so you can have a look. It kind of tells you a few things that they were doing. The names of the directors. There was a dance. Um, very, very interesting. Okay. There's ladies entertainment, aside from men's entertainment. It tells you what the years are. Very, very interesting. And this is a conference committee. I'm going to go ahead and just let you, I'll try to pause it here, just so that you guys can see some of the names. See if you recognize anyone. Try to keep my hand a little steady. There's some Colmes in there, Tremblay. Bougie, Clavo, there's a Louis Rossi at the bottom there. Okay, so again, if you know any of those people or family members, feel free to tag them in this video so they can kind of have a look at that. It's usually a little bit of a treasure when you find your relatives or other people's names and information in some of these things. There is, uh, this is T Timmins Daily Press, and from April 8th, 1969, Cocker Knights Celebrate Jubilee. And it's quite the long article, so we won't read it all. And right in the back of this, something really cute and interesting that I'm gonna show you just because it's here. You've got the town of Cochrane back in 1969. Look at how pretty that is, right? Are you, I'm trying to make sure we're on the straight. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that gorgeous? Now I'm going to slowly go up here. Growing the town of Cochrane. Cochrane Enterprises Limited. Home of popular of Poplar Piewood. <laughs> Very beautiful. A little bit different when you look at that, right? Because there's more greenery, but something else too, in 1969, you're gonna look at the bridge. Let's see if we can do it here. I'm gonna try to make sure I'm over here. See this here, right where my little, my, well, my little, here's my big finger. You got this little tiny bridge. That's where our bridge is currently. The, the pavilion is here. Okay, this is where Commando School was, the high school. Um, so this is 1969, but you notice, it looks a little bit different. And then you've got a white bridge. It's because there were some people that were having a little bit of a contention with which bridge was up at certain times. So it was a white bridge in 1969. So that was the other one. I know who has pictures of it. We have pictures as well, but just so I know they're watching. <laughs> uh, White Bridge, 1969, photo evidence. 
Okay, so we've got two copies of that. We also have Knights of Columbus News, and this is from the Northland Post in 1969. Celebrating the 50th anniversary of its, chartering, of its chartering this year, Cochrane Council 1917 of the Knights of Columbus have been paying a good deal of attention to its past and founding members. Um, and then it goes on to say that they've put different articles and things in the paper. And it also goes on to talk about the order itself, 35 years old, with Temiskaming Council 1917, as the Cochrane Council was originally named, received its charter on February 7th, 1919. The late Albert T.H. Taylor who in 1914 had been the town's third mayor, who was returned to the mayor's chair in 1917, was a moving spirit in persuading a group of citizens to establish the order here. First meeting was held February 27, 1919, with Albert Taylor as a grand knight, Reverend Father Peltier as chaplain, and the following officers, Deputy Grand Chief A.V. Redmond, Chancellor J.P. McLaughton, Duncan McKinnon, Financial Secretary M.T. McCluskey, Warden J. Van Russell, uh, Recording Secretary, Secretary was John Durack, and Treasurer was J.E. Newton, Lecturer Joss McGill, Rooney Associate Joss Burney. A lot of people named Joseph. Um, then there was a Fournier as a guard, a Cooper as a guard, a Dowdy as a guard, and a Boivar. So those are all the people. It goes on to talk a little bit more about it and says that the first donation to the Church of the Transfer Transfiguration was made in 1921 when $175... Sorry about that, guys. It kind of cut out a little bit. I've, I've gone to my data, so it should be a little bit better. Um, okay, so the first donation to the Church of the Transfiguration was made in 1921 when $175 was paid for lighting fixtures. So that was when the Knights of Columbus went ahead and they donated their first chunk of money to the Transfiguration Church, Catholic Church. Through the years, the council has always been generous, not only towards the church, but towards uncounted community organizations and projects. St. Joseph School, the Roman Catholic Cemetery, the Lady Minto Hospital, and the Public Library. The church's youth activities, the Hearst uh, Seminary, and minor hockey. So that's very interesting, and it goes on. Quite a bit of history there. Thank you for those who stuck with us. I hate it when it, something like that happens. The, uh, the internet's sometimes a little sketchy in the day when there's a lot of people here and we're not plugged in. So I might have to rectify that next time. Okay, then we also have um, documents about the members, the membership and what the fees were for members for Knights of Columbus. And that is actually stamped as of I want to get the date here for you 1987 so all the documents there and then we have an article from 1996 april 20th northern runners take arthritis to distance promoting fitness and raising money for a worthy cause and inspiring reasons behind the growing success of the relay run for the arthritis society this run was also helped by the knights of columbus that uh give arthritis a run for its money <laughs> Um, the Knights of Columbus in Northern Ontario coordinated the event, which takes place from June 6th to 9th. The 685 kilometers run, run, sorry, begins from Sudbury and it will pass through Manitoulin Island, Tobermory, uh, Owen Sound, Collingwood, Wasega Beach, Elmsvale, Mid Midland, Perry Sound. And then it goes on to talk about more of the things that were going on around here. There's a wonderful picture. We'll see if we can get it to straighten out for you. You know any of the gentlemen in that picture? Feel free to go ahead and tag them, or you can always, they have family members you think might be interested. Okay. So lots of different interesting stuff there. So the files, again, that we went through today, just because I know there's a few people that keep track of what we're going over, uh, Lavouche, and we had the Knights of Columbus. So very interesting. I do want to give a shout out. Um, there is Franco-Ontarian Day. They're going to be doing some things at the pavilion. If you check the Facebook page for us or you drop by the library and look at the community board, um, the public is invited on, I believe it's Saturday. I said Friday, but I think it's Saturday. Um, I think it's the 25th. 
And again, you can search all those community groups on Facebook. Most of them have pages, but you can always contact us at the library. We can try to give you the information for it. Uh, great event, and it's supposed to be happening, I believe, at the Pavilion and celebrating Francophone culture and all that great stuff. Uh, the ladies of the UCFO were raising a flag yesterday, and I got to watch that as I put books away. It's great. So I hope you all had a wonderful day. You enjoyed this Archives Live. I'm sorry about it cutting out again. Remember, it'll be uploaded here on Facebook as well as on YouTube, and you're able to view previous episodes of this on Facebook and YouTube. On YouTube, they're a little bit more coordinated and easier to find. You can always visit our channel, subscribe, and you'll never miss any content that way. And alternatively, again, you can view them here. We will be back next Thursday at uh, 2.30, hopefully on the dot. <laughs> if you have any archive requests, remember, you can do the, do the different methods. You can give us a call, 705-272-4178. You can email us, artists, A-R-D-I-S, at CochraneOntario.com. Visit our website, www.CochranePublicLibrary.com. And you go ahead, click on services archives you get all of our information there or drop by the library monday through friday from 10 a.m till 4 p.m for any of this information i think that's everything getting good at this feel have yourself a wonderful weekend and always keep remembering your history bye guys